let's look at a way to actually download font files into our web project so that we don't have to rely on an internet connection or a CDN content delivery network connection to a font library. So we're going to go ahead and we want to change this maybe H1 to a, a font called Rock Salt instead of the default. So we can actually go to somewhere like Font Squirrel and we can, I'm not on the home page, hold on. Okay, and then we can search for that font and double check that it's okay to use that, um, that it has a free license that allows you to use it in your website with CSS. So do double check the usage rights there. But we can go ahead and download this TTF or true type font. It's going to give you, you a zip file that if you extract that and look at what's in there, you will see that TTF file. And so that's what we're going to use now with the generator on their site. So I'm going to go to the generator tab and I'm going to agree that the font, well, let's upload the fonts here first and grab that TTF open it up and say yes I have legal rights to do this because we just read that download your kit button and then you should get another download to the downloads area of a web font kit if I open that up you'll see there's two WOFF files that we're going to use and there's also this stylesheet.css that I'm going to use I'm going to grab those two fonts and I'm going to copy them and then find my document or my um, project that I'm working on. Mine happens to be called examples and I'm going to be adding them there but let's do the file management in Visual Studio Code. So I'm actually going to create a folder called fonts that's going to hold my fonts just like I have my styles or images or scripts. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new folder called fonts and that's where I want to actually put those two in and paste them. I could have done it in there too, but there we go. So now I'm going to look at that zip or that kit again. And this time I'm going to open up that stylesheet.css. Mine's just going to kind of open up with the browser here. Um, it opened up in Firefox for some reason, but I just want to grab this code that's in there. You could open up a different way if you want. And I'm going to place that inside of my style sheet and you can leave the, the comment there if you want to give them some credit of where you got it that's fine but you do need your at font face to be at the very top of all your other CSS just like the at import was now we can see that it brought in a font family name and those it's pointing here to the URL of where those two fonts are well our two fonts are not inside of styles because we're at, we're at the style sheet right now and if it looks directly for those two, it's going to expect them right here in styles. They're not. They're in the fonts folder. And if I put fonts here, now we're saying they're inside the fonts folder inside of styles. Again, we don't have a fonts folder inside of styles. So what we need to tell it to do is go back up one level so that you're kind of on the same level as your index.html then look around and see if you can find a fonts file and yes at that level you would be able to see the fonts file and you would be able to see those two so do make sure the pathway is actually pointing where those two fonts are that just happens to be where I I place them but wherever you place them you'll need to make sure you point to the right direction now I can target anything on my web page any text on my web page and change the font family um, property and you do want to name it exactly as it looks like right here, salt, and then if you want some backups, like a web safe font, like Bradley Penned, um, you put that on there, and this one kind of goes with the cursive generic uh, font specification. And so now, if I go back to my index where that style sheet is attached to, I can look at that and I do see those fonts come in and it should work just fine that way and now you actually have those files inside of your project and not just connected to an external library.